of the Spanish and Portuguese section. Uh, I'm delighted to be with you here. Thank you so much for um, the honor of having one of our graduates receiving the prize. It means a great deal to, to the department. Um, the department started quite small. I mean, Portuguese is, is considered to be a, a small language, but uh, probably for all the sort of uh, wrong reasons. And Professor uh, Manusha Lisboa and I actually, we, we fought side by side and we had the pleasure to see our subject growing steadily and becoming uh, uh, the sort of uh, success story, the Cambridge success story, which is today. Uh, and Hannah is clearly a great proof uh, for that. I'll, um, I'll leave all the details to Professor Manusha Lisboa, who has been the machine, the power, the inspiration behind all, all things Portuguese at Cambridge. And she will tell you much more. Um, just to say that, uh, speaking as the director of the section, that um, uh, Portuguese is of extreme importance. It's a full tripos language. There are many papers and um, it is very well supported at, uh, at this uh, point. Of course, we would love to grow more. Um, uh, I should also mention that myself, I speak Portuguese. I was uh, educated in uh, uh, Navella, and I uh, I teach Portuguese linguistics, and all our students actually get to teach Portuguese linguistics. We organize many events in collaboration with the Instituto Camões, and also with uh, Dr. João Costa, with whom I am uh, very good colleagues. Actually, we're both uh, uh, linguistics uh, colleagues. Um, as I said, it's a great honor, uh, and um, I, I let uh, the rest to Professor Man Manusha Lisboa. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Joana. Um, um, I am formerly Maria Manuel Lisboa, but everybody, including all my students, my lovely students like Hannah, call me Manusha. Um, one of the great delights about being um, uh, teaching in Cambridge is that we get extraordinarily wonderful students. And Hannah really stands out amongst the extraordinarily wonderful as being incredibly wonderful. She really stood out from um, um, uh, what's now a, a large group of students. Again, going back to what you were now saying, Portuguese is so popular that, that now that we've had to cap numbers on one of the papers um, because there are too many people wanting to do Portuguese and there aren't enough of us to teach. Um, uh, so there's a large group of students to compare Hannah with, and she really stood out in all respects, not just academically, of course, but um, in terms of being one of the, um, uh, what I suppose the English call a good citizen um, amongst the whole cohort of students. Um, it was, you know, we have to keep our students um, happy and educate them and so on. But uh, we also need input from the students to make our lives happy. And Hannah was one of the students that made all of us extremely happy. So when it came to deciding this um, um, prize, it was, there was no debate. We all, as a single voice, named her amongst this very large group of students. At that point, there were about um, uh, 60, 70, something like that. And nobody else was mentioned. It was Hannah who had to get the prize. So Hannah, we're very proud of you. You're our pinteinho, um, our little chicken. And um, it's <laughs> wonderful to see you. And um, you absolutely deserve this, no more than anybody else possibly could. So many, many congratulations. So um, thank, you. thank you. So um, if we ask uh, Senhor Embaixador, if you'd like to say, present and say a few words. Yes, of course, I, have. I never did it uh, from a, a virtual point of view. <laughs> so I think for all of us, it's a, it's a new thing. Maybe it's the new normal, as people say now. We are always creating, now it's the new normal. Maybe we have uh, found ourselves in what is the new normal. Uh, well, uh, this occasion is a particular one, as you know, the, the situation we are facing, but uh, thank God we are are able to meet and to see each other and to talk to each other, which I think is the most important thing. And I'm uh, very 
honor and very happy to be able to share with you this occasion and from a virtual point of view to give the, the prize to our, as I heard, brilliant student and brilliant enthusiast for Portuguese culture and Portuguese language. Um, wishing, of course, uh, well, uh, first of all, I like to always to thank those that not being Portuguese love our language, love our culture, love us as Portuguese and what we represent. I think that I feel proud when this happens. So uh, I feel proud that you uh, have uh, had this enthusiasm and this interest. Uh, and I think it's a good answer, to be honest. I think you'll be happy during your life in, if you continue to uh, uh, proceed with your studies, with your interest, with your research in the world of, uh, of Portuguese um, culture, language, and what uh, we are. I'm happy also that uh, this prize is going to a Cambridge student. I think it's important. Cambridge is, everybody knows, one of the essential, most famous universities in the United Kingdom. And certainly to pick up someone from that university is a real symbol of quality and of distinction. That, uh, uh, for me, it's very important, and I also have to thank Manusha and Johanna for their work, for their effort, for their commitment to uh, their teaching and to their uh, students, um, and certainly praise uh, their work. I hope that um, you will be happy in the future, that... Uh, your life will be full of blessings and of professional successes. And uh, I'm sure that we, we, you will honor this, this prize. I have no doubts about that. And I wish you all the best for your life. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. Hannah, over to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Em primeiro lugar, gostaria de agradecer à Sandra Carito por organizar esta cerimónia virtual e ao excelentíssimo embaixador por entregar o prémio. Valorizo muito o esforço e é uma grande honra. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank my family, who have been nothing but supportive throughout my education. I started off my journey through higher education, studying dentistry at the University of Sheffield, and when it became abundantly clear that I wasn't enjoying myself, they drove me to the Cambridge Open Day and went on to help me through the application process. And I really wouldn't be here without them. Now onto my experience of Portuguese studies. Before I arrived at Cambridge in 2015, my only experience of Portuguese had been a couple of private lessons and a few short stories by Machado de Assis in translation. But after four years, I had received a thorough education in Lusophone studies. Studying Portuguese at Cambridge really started off with Felipe, who took in a group of students with virtually no linguistic skills whatsoever and went on to teach us not only the invaluable skill of being able to communicate and express ourselves in a foreign language, but to refine our writing style and engage with Lusophone culture introducing us to a huge variety of cultural material from newspaper articles to essays to music and film. And the result was that by the end of four years, this group of absolute beginners, including myself, was quite happily translating Jane Austen from English into Portuguese, which I think is quite extraordinary. In terms of translation from Portuguese to English, I have Vivian to thank, who unfortunately cannot be here today but I will always remember her adamance on not using a dictionary, which, while at first seemed a little daunting, encouraged us to produce intuitive translations that sensitively responded to context and register. On the cultural side of things, I'd like to thank Maite and Manusha, who ensured that we had an extensive literary and cultural education in Lucifer studies, from Essa de Queiroz to Brazilian cinema novel. It was such a pleasure to learn from two academics who are so deeply knowledgeable and passionate about their respective areas of expertise and who always challenged me to develop my ideas and to interpret texts and films in new and imaginative ways. I also have to thank Joanna, 
who, as well as teaching the linguistics portion of the Portuguese course, giving me a firm grounding in Lusophone phonology, morphology, syntax, and linguistic variation, spent a lot of time as my director of studies. I'd like to thank her for being so invested in and supportive of my academic and personal development throughout my time at Cambridge. In this respect, I also need to thank Martin Crowley for being an excellent director of studies too. And finally, on the Cambridge front, I'd like to thank Hazel Robbins, who helped me out a lot in first and second year, providing extra feedback on my essays, extra oral practice, and just generally encouraging me to push my work to the best that it could be. But my education in Lucifer Studies wasn't restricted to the University of Cambridge, as I learned a huge amount during my year abroad, which I spent studying at the University of Coimbra's Faculdade de Letras. Being immersed in Portuguese by attending lectures and completing assignments in the language helped my fluency and comprehension to no end, and it was hugely beneficial to be exposed to new teaching styles and academic perspectives. In terms of my academic experience of Coimbra, what really stood out were Brazilian literature classes with Osvaldo Manuel Silvestre, who was a fantastic teacher and advocate for Brazilian studies, and Portuguese written composition classes with Professora Conceição Carapinha, who was the most ferocious grammarian I have ever encountered. Um, a further academic highlight of my year abroad arose when I had the opportunity to visit the Arquivo Nacional da Imagem e Movimento in Lisbon. At the time, I was, I was completing a project for Cambridge about the affiliation between the Brazilian sociologist Gilberto Freire and the Portuguese Estado Novo, which led me to study a series of propaganda films produced by the regime during the colonial war in Africa. And I was lucky enough to be granted access to these films on their original reels by the Arquivo Nacional, which was hugely exciting and a massive privilege. I also tried my hardest to make the most of life in Coimbra outside of academia. And a big part of this was the time I spent singing and rehearsing with the Coro Mistu da Universidade de Coimbra. I've always loved singing, so I was thrilled to find that Coimbra University had such a thriving choral community. I think that my proudest moment with the choir was when I participated in a concert called A Minha Patria e a Língua Portuguesa, a concert that I actually went on to study and question at length with Felipe in my final year at Cambridge, but which nevertheless inspired a wonderfully varied concert with songs originating from every corner of the Portuguese speaking world, from Mozambique to Timor Leste. While covering life outside the classroom, I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank my friend Martinho, who spent many hours walking around with me in the Chopal Forest, helping me with my conversation skills and recommending Portuguese authors, films, music, etc. Now, it's really important to highlight here that my engagement with Lucifer in language and culture is not a thing of the past, but something that I continue to pursue in the present and that I will pursue in the future. Before the pandemic, I was working as a language assistant at a primary school in Valencia, but I made sure to keep in contact with Portuguese by working on a series of translation projects with the University of Coimbra's Centro de Estudos Clásicos e Humanísticos. This has been a fantastic opportunity to not only further enrich my linguistic capabilities in the field of Portuguese to English translation, but to also learn about classical reception studies in Portuguese and Brazilian theatre and literature. This is an area that I was introduced to in Cambridge during my final year when I studied Helio Correa's Ujancor with Manusha, and I have thoroughly enjoyed broadening my knowledge by translating a series of articles dealing with a vast array of classical themes in Lusophone culture, from the poetry of Manuel Bandeira to that of contemporary Portuguese writers such as José Miguel Silva and Antonio Arno. As for the future, I am very excited to return to Cambridge in September to start a teaching qualification in secondary modern languages. I made sure that my love of all things Portuguese was a prominent feature of my application, as well as the interview process, and I've already discussed the possibility of starting a Portuguese club at my placement schools and, introdu and introducing Portuguese songs to music ensembles. In the long term, I hope to explore the possibility of teaching Portuguese GCSE and generally increasing the profile of Portuguese in UK state education, because I think it's a huge shame that Portuguese isn't more widely taught. I look forward to doing my bit to change this, especially considering the Department of Education's endorsement of lesser taught languages in the curriculum. That's about it from me, so thank you very much to everyone listening, to the Anglo-Portuguese Society, and to all those involved in giving me the Anne Waterfall Student Award 2019, because I am utterly delighted 
to have my hard work recognized in this way. Thank you so much, Anna. Um, and I, I, th I think um, everyone will, um, will agree and that uh, we couldn't have found a more worthy um, recipient of the, uh, the award for this year. And I'm sure that you're gonna go on to do great things. Um, you mentioned Hazel Robbins. She actually was also a recipient back in the day of the award. Um, <laughs> so, it, and we, we had her come back a couple of years ago to give a talk. So I'm sure that in future, we will see you once more and invite you to give a talk because most uh, undoubtedly you will be there um, and you'll have an interesting topic to present. So we can only wish you all the best, Hannah. Um, it has been a, a pleasure to um, in, in, so have this communication. So it's been virtually and by email and, um, and it's the first time we've ever done a, a virtual presentation ceremony, as His Excellency says, we'd normally have um, an in-person event. Um, we'd welcome you at the residency of His uh, Excellency and hopefully when things resume to a new type of normal, um, we will actually get to meet you in person and, and welcome you properly. Um, we'll also be sending the, um, we have a certificate which we'll email for now. <laughs> um, and, um, and so this, and we'd also like to thank and recognize um, Canning House. Um, we have a restricted fund and thank, thanks to their support, we were able to offer 1,000 pounds as opposed to the 500 that we would have normally done. So thank you, uh, Christina and, and the team for having, a, um, agreed with us on that. So thank you to Canning House as always. And, um, uh, and this year uh, we have now launched the 2020 uh, Student Award um, um, candidacy process. Uh, and we look forward to receiving many applications. Uh, it's our 30th anniversary. So we've been having awards now for 30 years and um, hopefully we'll be other students who may be seeing this and they will follow in your footsteps, Hannah. You are certainly uh, a role model and I think uh, some I think some of the people can aspire to be so thank you um, and uh, Christina would you like to say a few words in closing? Sandra j just very briefly I mean first of all I just wanted to say hearty congratulations to Hannah um, very very well done very very pleased um, that, that you got the prize um, I, I'm also you know it's slightly sad that we can't actually have a get-together having been at, at the previous award ceremony which was, you know, which was such a such a lovely occasion and, and more extended and and with a glass of wine and things like that. <laughs> Quite nice. Um, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure the ambassador will allow us to to maybe play catch up at some point in the future when we can get back together. Um, but Sandra, you mentioned the uh, the thirtieth anniversary. Um, I'm just wondering. I mean, people are very fond of doing things in ten. So I wonder, you know, at the thirtieth anniversary, if we have a live event on that occasion. Should we get the previous winners back if they're around? I, I, I think it's a wonderful idea. Um, and certainly this year we had big plans for it. Unfortunately, uh, the pandemic sort of put the kibosh on that. Um, but I agree. I think it'd be wonderful to welcome back um, our students, get in contact with them and see who take part. And hopefully it will be in person and, um, so, and perhaps have a hybrid whereby we have both in person and virtual. Therefore, anyone who cannot make it can be there, um, at least in spirit. And uh, maybe those of you who are at home or wherever you may be viewing um, this uh, ceremony today, uh, it's an example of what we can do in the future. So we'll use it. And, and I, but obviously the in person is so much better, as you said, Christina, it's a far more pleasant affair. Um, but uh, I think this is certainly a way forward as well and get us in contact with more and perhaps um, other family members and friends can participate. So we'll definitely take on that suggestion, Christina, thank you. Can I say just a very brief word? I yes. want, may I? Yes, I want also to acknowledge the attendance of Christina Kortz from Canning House. And I, I want to here to praise uh, her work, uh, having uh, found uh, association if i can say so she has given a new impulse a new impetus to canning house and uh, i think her work is very valuable also in the domain of uh, making our british friends knowing better what our culture and uh, how what 
our history is, but also our modernity. Christina has done, in my view, an excellent job also to promote Portugal and the Portuguese way of life, our society, our economy, what we aim for. And I'm very thankful to her. And I think it's quite fair to have this acknowledgement uh, in this occasion. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> right. Well, um, I think that's, um, we'll round it up. I have to just thank you all, Sr. Ambassador, um, and everyone who has joined us today for your participation. And we look forward to seeing you again, be it this way or in person in the future. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you. All the best for everybody. Good health. Thanks, Hannah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Protections. <laughs> sí. Obrigado. Obrigado. Thank you. Obrigado. Thank Bye. you.